Hey everybody. Um, I am back with another Art Therapy Thursday. I hope you guys are ready for another watercolor class. Um, go ahead and wave and say hi. Let me know you're here. Today, um, we are here in my new studio, which is almost done. I am you know, pretty excited that it's uh, nearly finished. And um, I am going to be um, filming from my new lighting space here. So uh, sort of a trial run to see how everything's going. And um, you can see behind me uh, my new um, painted fireplace and my thread, my yarn is over there. And I have a little tie dye over my long arm bars behind me here, which is waiting for me to give the new long arm uh, situation a new test run. Uh, so today we're going to be doing, um, hello Tammy, hi. Uh, today we're gonna be doing um, a mystical um, underwater scene. So we're gonna start off by doing some um, jellyfish like this. And, and they're very abstract jellyfish. Um, the nice thing about jellyfish is that um, they're so random and there's so many breeds of jellyfish, so many species that um, you can do whatever you want and no one can really um, second guess you because you know who are they to say that you're doing it wrong. Um, and so uh, once we do those and sort of get the feel for those, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do this really cool guy, this sort of mystical ocean here, um, which is basically we're going to fill this silhouette shape with um, the same jellyfish and then add this cool thing on the top here. Um, and I'll talk to you about how to transfer designs like this, which is something that you can use um, in other ways. Hey Q, how are you doing today? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, let's see, are there anything special that I'm using today? I don't think so. Um, the main thing is that once again, we're going to be pouncing off some color and we don't wanna transfer the texture of our paper towel or napkin or whatever to our painting. So you are gonna to need to have um, like, a, like a smooth napkins or smooth tissues when you do this painting later on. Um, and then um, uh, I would suggest having two cups of water um, because uh, the water's gonna get pigmented really, really fast. Um, Bobby Andrews says that it froze up. Um, I think probably that's on your end, Bobby. So just go ahead and like shut it down and like join back in in a second. Um, so hopefully that's not happening on my end. Um, okay, so we're gonna do um, the jellyfish paintings first and then uh, jump into doing the whale. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and um, rebalance it and make sure that it doesn't tip over and we'll go ahead and get started, okay? All right, here we go. So I'm flipping the camera and we're looking at my awesome new table. Isn't that cool? I finished painting it. Um, it's kind of a fossil feeling. Okay, and my, I have my camera sort of a little bit higher today to try to get us a better view. And let's see, I've managed to set my glasses down, which of course is super unhelpful. Here they are, sorry. I normally have them right on my head. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do these two guys first. And here are my paints. So we're gonna try a couple of different techniques here. Um, and I just wanted to sort of repoint out, do you see these little speckles here, right here? That is done with salt, okay? Now you can sprinkle salt on your wet watercolor. And I have done that um, on a, one of our other paintings. Um, but what that requires is your patience. You cannot rush salt. You have to let it dry completely all by itself. So I'm not doing that in the demonstration today. I'm actually going to be using my hair dryer. Um, but if you like this sort of speckles, uh, like haloing, what you do is you sprinkle the salt on the wet watercolor and you have to leave it alone and let it dry completely naturally. All right, um, so I'm not gonna take the time to do that for our demonstration. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do um, basically this guy first and we'll put in these cool light streaks. So that's kind of my goal for our first one. I have our paper masked off here. Once again, I'm working card sized. Um, so this is a, a five by seven card that's masked down. Um, it's just my preferred sort of size to work. Um, I just find it more fun to work small than big because it lets me get away with more. 
Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is get my entire paper nice and wet. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do is we're doing a wet on wet wash today to do these techniques. So I'm just using a generous amount of water and one of my larger brushes and getting the entire area completely wet. And it doesn't matter what colors you use. Um, you know, if you want your ocean to read more green or more blue or lighter or darker, more purple, it really just doesn't matter. Okay, so we're completely wet. Um, Annette says, cool table, thank you. Yes, I'm very excited about my table. It has a, a beautiful sort of fossil feel, which is, goes great with my octopus, which is on my long arm. Um, so it's just kind of a, a real underwater kind of thing. So I'm just going to basically grab some blues and I'm just blobbing them in here, okay? And I'm changing randomly, just blobbing them in. And I am stroking my brush, um, you know, kind of at, at an angle because I, I want those stripes of, of water to kind of land at a bit of an angle. So I'm just kind of, you know, starting off like I mean to go on and I'm just grabbing all different blues that I have and I'm, I'm not really being all that particular about, you know, which one's which. I don't really care. Now, the best thing to do here is to let this dry on its own. You get a much more beautiful movement with watercolor if you can have the patience to just leave it alone. Um, it moves better, it, um, it kind of grows and makes little spider webby um, kind, of, kind of things. Um, you know, if you have these little blobs of darker color, they, they take on a much more um, attractive sort of life if you can find it in yourself to just not quickly dry. I'm dabbing some just water here, and that causes that area to sort of bleach a little bit, um, which is really neat. Okay, so I'm just laying on some, some random color here, and you can um, experiment with doing different kinds of things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold my um, napkin with a, it's got a smooth edge, because we don't want to emboss um, you know, we don't want to emboss the shape of the little seashells on the napkin into the, into the painting. So I've got it folded nice and tight, and I'm going to move my paint out of the way so I can get my hand up here. And basically, I'm going to just press and let it soak up a stripe. Okay, let's do that again. And I might need to gently roll my napkin a little bit and get the paint away. So I'm kind of pressing with a fresh area. So I'm gently pressing and soaking up a stripe. The idea here is that these are sort of sunbeams that have broken through the cloud. Now that one, do you see how it's wrinkly? That's because I didn't move my, um, I didn't move it. So sort of the wet wrinkles from the previous stamp kind of got in there. All right, so. I don't really want those wrinkles so, so much. So I'm gonna get that wet again, and then sort of dab it. Take away a little bit, okay? And now when I put the jellyfish in, um, they need to have a little bit of this paint removed um, just so that the color is, seems really pure. So the way that we do this is we take a smooth part of our napkin and we wrap it nice and tight around our finger and I'm pulling. Can you see how I'm pulling the napkin so that it's smooth over the pad of my finger and then wrinkly um, down towards the base. So I've got smooth and wrinkle. So all I'm gonna do is press and rock my finger back and forth and make um, basically a little moon shape here. And do you see how it's smooth and then it's kind of like jaggedy? And that's because I have the wrinkles down here, okay? So I'm gonna just keep doing that and basically stamp away the pigment on my, um, you know, my paper here a couple of different times. And you're, you know, wanna look for a nice composition and jellyfish don't agree. So some of them, you know, twirl at different angles, you know, they kind of float and they get confused and they go different directions. Um, but just keep your composition in mind and, you know, look for a nice cluster I would say, and I'm just kind of smoothing this again, 
you know, odd numbers look really nice. You know, a little bit of a balance, asymmetrical, you know, weighted balance perhaps um, would be attractive. Um, and different sizes, okay? So I'm basically just sort of stamping away the pigment there. All right? So that painting, the underpainting here is finished um, and totally done and, and ready to go. So we want that to preferably dry naturally. Um, however, for today, I am going to hit it with a hair dryer, but I'm gonna let it go as far as I can naturally by itself and work on doing the other jellyfish painting that's going to be the bookmark. Okay, so I'm just gonna move here and I'm gonna do this bookmark one and try to let the original um, painting dry as much as I can um, naturally before I hit it with the hair dryer. All right. Same with this one though, is that we're gonna go for this more modeled kind of look, modeled shaping here, okay? And we're gonna do this again with wet on wet, but we're just gonna let it sort of blob into place. And then we're gonna still stamp out the same jellyfish, okay? So it's sort of the same process. So once again, we're getting it totally wet. And you can see that my water is already like a little bit blue from washing my brushes out, um, which is why we wanna have second water nearby because when we do the whale, we're gonna to wanna to have clear water. So for this one, I like the idea of it having a little bit of a bright spot here at the top to imply that the sun is sort of filtering in. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some blues and I'm just blobbing this time. I'm not, I'm not using brush strokes, I'm not making it smooth. I'm just doing blobs. But I'm also going to go in and get some yellow, which mixes, you know, it, it, it mixes on the, on the brush because the brush isn't really all that clean. And then of course, anywhere I touch a blue, um, you know, it mixes into like a green. So you can kind of work with the yellows a little bit and, and change that as much as you feel like is necessary. Um, you know, you want it more or less, adding a little bit more blue, but I'm just blobbing it in. And that's going to um, just kind of um, do its watercolor thing. Watercolor does best, which is, you know, leach together and make little flares um, of color that just sort of migrate together. So this is a really speckled and dappled um, you know, environment. And I'm just adding some more blues. I'm getting grabbing a darker blue, like an indigo color. And just sort of, you know, playing around, creating a few kind of layers here with color. And it's just really wet, wet on wet, and it's going to sort of, you know, shatter and and kind of crawl around on the paper. Maddie Curte is here today, and she says, thank you for the time taking making these online events. Oh, thank you, and I do appreciate hearing that sometimes. Um, some of you may know that I had a really unpleasant experience with my online class on Monday, and somebody took the time to actually email me and tell me that they were sick of me wasting their time, which is really kind of an impressive thing to say about a, a free class. Um, anyway, it was really hurtful, so I, I do appreciate you, Maddie, for taking the time to say that to me. Thank you. Okay, so um, we're gonna do the same deal with the jellyfish and I'm going to just sort of roll my finger and make a little ghost shape there. And it doesn't take off all the pigment, um, but it does, um, it really lightens it, which makes our top painting section um, be a lot easier. And obviously it's the simplest thing for me is to use my pointer finger. Um, but if I want smaller jellyfish, I could take the time and use my pinky finger to try to get like a little smaller of a stamp. So I'm kind of doing that now, trying to make a little bit of a smaller shape. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna leave that one with um, three of these larger jellyfish, and then I'm gonna add to it later on. So now, like I said, the best thing to do is to let these dry by themselves. That's the best thing. Um, and you really get um, some of this really lovely sort of crawling, of natural crawling. And when you hit it with a hair dryer, it just sort of um, cuts short that process. Um, so it doesn't move as much. And so 
it is better to leave it, but I'm gonna go ahead and dry it. So hold your ears, guys, I'm gonna dry these. Dry this one first. Thank you. All right, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna go back and work on the first painting, so I'll move that one closer. And I'm gonna do two different types of jellyfish here. Um, I have absolutely no idea what they're called, and they're probably not even real, but it doesn't matter. Um, I'm just sort of making them up. But the first one is one that um, I'm going to do is the sort that's mostly just the canopy part and doesn't really have anything going on similar to like a moon jelly i guess i don't think moon jellies come in purple but i don't care i like purple um so we're gonna make this this style first and i used white watercolor paint to make these little stripes um but the truth is is that i think this would look really cool if i took um one of my gel pens maybe in like a gold or a silver or maybe even some um like craft glitter and really just kind of made this even more mystical and sparkly. But these little star flares that you see in the sample that are not in the painting is, again, leaving salt to dry naturally. You'll get those starry flares, okay. Alrighty, so I'm gonna to switch to using my round brush here. And all I am going to do is, again, this is a partly wet on wet and partly wet on dry technique. So right at the bottom where it's kind of raggedy, I'm going to get that part wet, okay? We've done this technique a couple of times um, in these little watercolor sessions, so you're gonna recognize it. So that's just water. And now I'll go and grab a color, whatever color you want your jellyfish to be. Um, it will have a bit of an interaction with the background, okay? So if you choose yellow and you paint over top of blue, you're going to get green. Um, so you definitely need to keep that in mind. All right, so I'm grabbing a purple here on my brush, and I'm going to start where it's dry and then pull down to where it's wet. And you can see that the bleeding just like wicks away. Okay, so I'm starting where it's dry and pull down to where it's wet. All right, let's just do that a couple more times. And I'm just working in like a little stripe here, pulling down to where it's wet. So that means the top will be this nice sort of um, crisp area and then the bottom will have this fuzziness to it all right Aileen is here she is from Brazil she um, is trying to convince me that all the quilters in Brazil know who Beth Ann Nemesh is um, I I just can't believe it but Aileen swears to me that it's true so hi Aileen how are you <laughs> um, okay so let's just do this um, over and over again okay so once again I'm getting the part where I want ragged to be wet and now I'm going to grab the purple start where it's dry and pull down to where it's wet and then let it bleed just like that okay and so that stamping method with my finger and those wrinkles in the napkin leaves this kind of white area and then you get this raggedy um, bleeding zone, um, which is just so beautiful and, and seems very jellyfishy. Um, I wouldn't want to take this to an aquarium staff someplace and, and, you know, have them be quizzed if there's an actual jellyfish that does this, but it's an abstract painting, so I don't really care. Okay, so I got that one wet and I'm just, I don't know, I, I have a couple purples here and I'm just sort of randomly grabbing um, a few different purples. And there we go. 
splashing the brush and adding a little water. Anne Hamill is here. Hi, Anne. It's nice to see you. There we go. Looks really cool. I've got several sort of bluish purple ones, so I think I want to go back and make another kind of reddish purple one so that he's not lonely. I'm gonna to need to turn into Bob Ross. Like, oh, a lonely little jellyfish. He needs a friend. Anyway, I find it very sort of relaxing to see the water bleed the way it does. I just think it's really interesting. And it, it always surprises me, sometimes in a negative way. <laughs> but that's them's the breaks with watercolor. You can't you can't really always plan on controlling it um, you kind of have to work with it but sometimes little you know happy accidents happen that um, you know forces you to adapt okay so there we go we're gonna let those just continue to sort of bleed naturally and we're going to switch our attention um, to the tall and skinny one, okay? Here we go. Moving the camera a little bit. So now we're back to the tall and skinny guy, and we're going to do um, a similar um, jellyfish, but this one, okay, this one is more, um, I don't know, kind of like a how your brain tells you a jellyfish looks, where it has like a big thick area. So if you ever learn about jellyfish, um, this is called an oral arm. Um, and it's um, oral like, like, like your mouth, O-R-A-L. Um, and that's where a lot of the sort of nerves and organs are inside of a, this style of jellyfish. All right, so we're gonna be doing jellyfish that look a little bit more like this this time, but they start off the same with that, with that bleeding canopy, okay? The only reason I know that about jellyfish is because I've quilted jellyfish so many times, and sometimes when I've done some of my quilts, they require actually a pretty fair amount of research into the um, environments that I that I quilt about. And I did a, a quilt called the Shell Collector, which has a um, large jellyfish family um, in it, and uh, so I ended up learning a lot about jellyfish that day. So now. I did that one exactly the same, but what I'm going to do this time is take my water and make a little wet zigzag underneath. And I'm gonna change the color um, a little bit of my um, paint. I'm grabbing like a purpley pink color. I want actually more of it, sorry. And then underneath of it, I'm just kind of letting the water spread underneath and then also going down to where it's dry, okay? So that's really the main change here. Okay, so let's do another one. So I've got the, the wet zone where I want the canopy to bleed, okay? And then a little bit of a wet zone coming down from where the canopy is going to be. And I know that those don't show until after I touch them with the paint. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's the same. Now it's just bleeding. And now I want another color. And you can, you can do a different color. Maybe green would be pretty. You know, it doesn't matter. They're not real jellyfish. And then I'm letting it bleed together. And then sort of, use, I dried off my brush a little bit and I'm pulling outside of the wet area so that it's kind of got those more crisp edges. Okay. Hello, Louise Mary Costa. So true from San Paulo, Brazil. Okay, well that's two Brazilians who say that all Brazilians know who I am. So I guess that must be everybody. <laughs> okay, here we go. That one's really hard to see because that area got really dry before I stamped it. So I'm not really sure um, how this one's gonna look. So it'll be a surprise. 
There we go. And I forgot, I forgot his wet spot underneath, so we'll do that. A little bit of water underneath of him. And we'll add a little color underneath, a little slightly different color. I like that. Okay. Now we're just gonna leave those two dry. Um, and in the meantime, I'm also gonna put in, while we're waiting on those to dry, I'm also gonna put in these little tiny guys. Now, my goal with these is not that they're small jellyfish. It's that they're the same jellyfish. They're just really far away. Okay, so I, I one time was at a quilt show in front of um, in front of an ocean quilt, and I had a um, a woman that was chatting with me about about the quilt, and um, and she was saying how she really liked it, except that the only thing that was really throwing her off with the quilt was that. I made such small dolphins on the quilt where the jellyfish were so big. And so clearly the dolphins were wrong because the jellyfish were very big. And I just um, really struggled not to point out to her that um, that's how perspective works when something's far away. So I don't know. It was one of the few times that I was really able to successfully engage my brain mouth problem um, and, and prevent me myself from telling her that she was really missing the point. But here we go, <laughs> little tiny jellyfish. So I'm using my super small um, brush and I'm just gonna put in basically the same shape, but very, very small. So this will look like a very far away jellyfish and they, they're so tiny, so you don't have to be very, very good at it. You just sort of make a little umbrella shape, very small. Just make a little crescent with your brush, sort of fill it in and then do like a little wiggle thing. And they look perfectly you know, acceptable versions of small jellyfish far away. I think it's probably pretty easy to go really crazy with this, but at some point you just have to decide to stop. And this is just another little bookmark. I like painting bookmarks because they're fast and if I mess them up, who cares? I can just throw them away. Um, and they make really sweet gifts to friends, you know. So I think it's a, a nice size painting to do. Alrighty, so let's see, where can we go to from here? Let's go ahead and use the hairdryer and dry what we've done completely, all right? So once again, everybody, hold your ears while I dry this. Good. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the white. Um, I have a white. I'll try to turn this around. Let's see. There. Um, there's the white, right? Barely in camera. Okay. So I have white. Um, now, not everybody's going to have white, but you probably do have white craft paint somewhere in your house. You can use anything, but you can also use a white gel pen. You could, in fact, these are fantasy jellyfish. You could use a silver gel pen or gold, or um, you can use you can use a whiteout pen. Have you ever seen those? Those work actually really well for paintings, which is kind of surprising. You can use a whiteout pen, roller bar white roller bar ball, sorry, um, pen. Okay, so I have a nice amount of white on my brush. So for these jellyfish, what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine um, where the color transitions. Uh, the most distinctly. And I'm going to decide that that is the upper canopy. So I'm going to use the white and I'm going to make a series of scallops right where the color transitions the most dramatically. Okay. And then from those scallops, I'm going to draw or paint rather a little line that goes up towards the top. Just like that. And now I'll also use the white and add a little bit of a zigzaggy kind of painting here. And now I will add basically the stingy tentacles 
And the stingy tentacles on this kind of jellyfish, they come right off the canopy everywhere that the, so the curtains are pulled up, right? So all the high little spots. So I've got long little stingy ones and they crisscross around because they're floating in the water, right? So they don't, they never just go straight. And so they're, they're, they're floating in whatever direction the jellyfish is going. And this is a nice time to think about the contrast of the color between the background and the jellyfish. So the higher the contrast here, the more you can see these, um, this part of the painting. All right, so I'm gonna examine where I think the color separates the best and then reinforce that. Add some lines that go up. A little kind of like squiggle just because I think it looks neat and the stingers and I'm using a really really thin liner brush you could also use um, like a micron pen here um, in maybe a different color you know use your imagination all right so the last one And this one doesn't have like a nice transition, so maybe this one's got a little bit of a lower view. But I'm just gonna make it up as I go. And a little bit of a little accent there, and this little stingers. And you can see here, because the background is darker, how the white shows up um, better. And I'm gonna bring this really close to the camera so you guys can, so that I'm sure that you're able to see it. Okay, hang on. Okay, so that painting is um, completely finished. So let's pull that up. Let's see, there you go. Looks pretty cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to the bigger painting. Let's see, right here. And now it's all the way dry. Now these particular jellyfish, they don't have the oral arm, okay? That's not the kind of jellyfish they are. So they are just gonna have, I'll pull this up really close. So they're just gonna have like little stingers that hang down and I'm gonna use the white to make like little speckles. Um, so once again, this would look really neat if you did it with sort of fantasy colors using, um, you know, a colored gel pen like silver. I'm just getting that same white and I'm just going to add like little dots similar to how I've done stars maybe for you guys before kind of random dots and the only thing I would suggest here is that you pay attention to where your lights coming from and put the dots on the side with the light because it's like the light sparkling um, against the jellyfish which is making them glitter okay so pay attention to where your light source is and Make sure that your light is what's hitting your jellyfish and making them sparkle. So on this one, I kind of have to switch sides a little bit. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and add a few like fun little stingers. And then we'll call this painting done. Just a really simple, success-oriented, little underwater painting. Um, I think probably um, the, you know, the real fun in these kind of paintings is to really take the time to play with um, just a lot of movement and excitement with the background. You know, use some of the tricks that I've showed you in past videos with using different grains of salt you know, get out your table salt, get out your, um, you know, your coarse salt, your, your, you know, Himalayan pink salt with your special pepper grinder, Maddie Curte. I know you have one of those. Um, and just try like different, the different grains of salt because they all, they all react differently um, and they create different little stars um, when they dry, but you do have to leave it alone. And then of course add lots of colors and, uh, you know, lots of water movement um, into the painting as well uh, and so that the background really you know has a lot of life to it okay
Okie dokie. I think that one looks pretty nice. I would call that one done. All right, so let's pull the tape off here and see what we see. Always pull like in the direction of your paper and try to hold it really snug. And the kind of tape that you should get is um, the one for fragile, okay? This tape here that I'm using right now is the one that's called Sharp Lines, and it is not a good idea <laughs> because it's like the stickier one. Um, it's good for painting, good for making stripes on your wall, um, but it's like really sticky. And I, I tore one of my paintings yesterday um, kind of, kind of nastily. And you can see here how, do you see how it lifted the paper fiber? So really the right kind of painter's tape is the stuff that's um, called fragile surfaces or newly painted surfaces. Um, it, it doesn't take much to mask off the water color from the paper. Um, but if the paper, if the tape is too sticky, you can actually damage your paintings pretty substantially by doing this. If you have a too sticky tape. All right, there we go. Beautiful. And this one's just got like a really big flare of light and I'll put this one next to it. You can see how very different they turned out. Um, and they're never gonna look the same twice, of course. And that's just what makes them fun. And so then here's the one we just finished. And here is the sample that I did before. So you can see they're almost identical. The difference here is that on this one, it got salt. Those little, those little speckles and sun flare, those little flares, that's salt. And here that didn't happen, okay? Um, but you can see some of the really cool movement, like right, right in here. That's the nice movement that you get when you leave watercolor to dry by itself, okay? All right, so let's do the really fun whale painting now, which is um, super easy. I think you're gonna be really happy with how easy this is. So we're gonna make this. So I have um, a fresh piece of um, paper here. And what I have done is I have just traced on tracing paper, I've traced my whale. Now when I made this sample painting, I just free drew this whale and painted it. Now I fully recognize that lots of you are going to say, screeching halt, I don't free draw anything, Bethann. I need something easier for that. So here's the way that watercolorists do it. What you do is you print a picture, or in this case, I could trace my existing painting, okay? Just like this, all right? And then what you do is you scribble with graphite on the back of all the lines, all right? And now, I'll move these out of the way. Position your graphite scribble drawing where you want it on your paper. Okay, and hold it still and use a pencil and go ahead and retrace. And you can press relatively firmly because you can always erase the pencil. One little trick though with pencil on watercolor paper is that um, if it ends up going on too dark, you just go ahead and erase it, but you can smudge it really badly if your eraser is dirty. So you need a nice, fresh, clean eraser um, the best kind is a what they call a kneaded eraser that is um, white color. And you can get those in a lot of places, like virtually every craft store will carry um, a white kneaded eraser. So you should keep that special and you should, um, you know, tear off bits and pieces so that you can keep it clean. Because um, you can actually like smudge the graphite around pretty nastily if, um, if you use a dirty eraser. And you don't want to use a black eraser or a pink eraser because those little colors get trapped in the fibers of your watercolor paper because watercolor paper is really what they call toothy. It's got a lot of texture to it. Okay, so big reveal. Ta-da! Whale. Okay, see? So what I'm gonna do for you guys, you're gonna to have to be patient, okay? So when I'm done with this broadcast, I'm going to take a picture of this and I'm going to post it in the comments. 
and you can then print it and do this trick for yourself. Okay, you'll have you may have to scale it a little bit using your printer, um, you know, scaling up or down, so that you get the scale just right um, for your whatever size you're working on. But you can have this. I'll put it in the comments so that you can feel free to print mine or. You just go on a Google search and Google humpback whale, and maybe it's doing something else, some other shape, um, and then um, print it, scribble on the back, and then trace the main shapes out, okay? Um, so June Hamilton asks me, where do I get the tape? So once again, she asked me, where do I get the 2093 tape? 2093 sharp lines tape. Um, is a specifically to painting, and that I get at either Home Depot or Ace Hardware in the painting section, but it's terrible for watercolor, okay, because it can tear the fibers pretty badly. Um, but if, you, if you're into home, home things, then feel free. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm protecting the top part of my painting where I want my eventual sunset to be, okay? So that's what I'm doing here. So I'm, I'm making a nice straight line, which is the horizon line up here, and I'm protecting the top of my painting. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to make um, this jellyfish painting, okay? We're going to make this jellyfish painting inside the humpback whale, all right? Now, the camera's going to bobble for just a second here, guys. I'm sorry. I have to plug it in. Okay, we don't want you guys to be dead from low power. That would be terrible. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, we're gonna get the entire humpback whale wet and then we're gonna just blob in our colors. And these colors are gonna be more sort of galaxy colors, I think. Um, so I'm gonna focus more on the blues and the purples. Let's see, I'll go like, maybe like that. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. All right, so I'm just going to use um, my water and use a generous amount of water and just paint the whole whale, okay? And ignore all the interior lines. So you do have to be, you know, a little careful here at first because the paint's gonna crawl to wherever the water is. So if you, if you accidentally go outside the line someplace in a, such a way that you think will look bad if you let paint go there, then stop what you're doing and dry your paper. And when the paper's completely dry, start over, okay? So if you go outside the lines, don't panic, but don't press on either. Just dry the paper and start over. And you can see I'm going right over top of the fluke and the mouth and the eye. So for right now, we're just ignoring that those exist. Okay, and now I'm ready to just blob in color, basically going from, you know, light to dark. So that's my goal. So I'm gonna start off with lighter colors here at the top, and I'm just gonna let them move all by themselves. I'm gonna bring the edge of the color all the way to the edge of the water and then let it move around. Maybe I want some purple under the chin. If you remember the um, last week I did the um, birch forest and I think the week before that we did I don't remember anymore, I'm starting to lose track. But anyway, we've done some shadows before where we've taken on a second pass and added shadows and we're gonna do that again with this whale. So it doesn't need to be, you don't need to worry about what, you know, if these look like they're in shadow now because we are gonna add the shadows after. Okay, so I'm just randomly grabbing these colors and just sort of blobbing them into place and again, I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer, but at home, you are gonna have patience and you are going to leave it alone and let it grow and move and do its own thing by itself. It's really hard, I know, but I insist that you do it.
And so the more sort of, I don't know, more sort of blobs that you put in here, then the more sort of spacey it looks because the just the way that the watercolors move around. Um, so don't don't try to over over stroke it. You just kind of want to plop them in. And I'm switching, just trying to get like a darker hue here at the tail. So it's kind of going from more or less light to dark. Okay, it's really tough to know when to stop, I know, but you gotta stop. All right, so now I'm still gonna put the jellyfish in, so same deal. <laughs> Gwendolyn says basically monster maniacal laugh like she's gonna have patience okay well I, I warned you so feel free <laughs> it, it, it is prettier though if you leave it alone okay so once again let's stamp out those jellyfish and it's a pretty small whale so I'm gonna just use the tip of my finger and um, make a little stamp here I'll do one there and maybe one down here okay now you could you know, not have jellyfish, that's fine too. I mean, if you like it just to look like a space whale, um, you know, with stars, then then leave it. Or or forget the blue and make it a rainbow. You know, like, do whatever you want. It would look really cool in lots of ways. Okay? All right, so now I'm gonna do what I told you not to do, and I'm going to dry this um, uh, for your benefit. But you should leave it alone and let it dry by itself. Okay, here we go, hold your ears. Um, and also, whenever, you, I've said this before, but whenever you dry something that has a puddle, start from really far away because when you hit this with air, you can make the paint skitter and then your paint's ruined. So make sure you stay far away from your painting. Okie dokie. I think that's probably dry enough. Let me see. Yes. Now, I don't know if it comes up on camera, but there's a few little paint speckles over here. And that's because I was blobbing my paintbrush and I lifted up and it flicked the paint. Um, so you just kind of need to be careful or don't worry about it, um, either one. All right, so here's our original. So you can see here that I have taken the time to shadow his belly just a little bit, his back fluke, and under his chin. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do right now, all right? All right, so in watercolor, shadowing is often handled with um, either indigo or purple. Um, so I'm actually gonna use purple for this one, um, but uh, with, with true watercolorists, they actually don't use black, okay? So we're gonna try to stick with the rules here and just use, um, like a purple, uh, but I'm gonna use like a bluish purple because um, it's a shadow, and so we want it to be like a cool shadow. Okay, so I'm mixing up a bluish purple on my paintbrush, and I can always make it darker, but it's tough to make it lighter, so I'm going to um, you know, dab off the moisture on my brush so my brush doesn't have so much moisture on it. And I'm simply going to paint where his mouth is and pull it down around his eye, which I can barely see at this point. And now I'm gonna get water, just water, and soften by pulling just water and just soften that edge and sort of feather it. Do you see how it's kind of feathering? But I'm just adding water. Okay, so I'm just feathering that edge, just like that, okay? 
All right, so we want to shadow this flute because this one here is on top of the whale by a little bit. So same deal on this side. I'm going to add the, um, you know, the darker purple right there and sort of feather it on both sides. And I'm just getting my paintbrush wet and pulling just water in both directions. And then these two colors of purple will just kind of, you know, basically crawl together. Okay, just like that. Looks pretty neat. So this one stays our original color and it will be distinct from the belly because now we have this crisp line here. And then this fluke will be nice and distinct on either side here. And this little triangle piece is what happened because I had water over top of that fluke. But we're gonna call that a happy accident because humpback whales are full of nicks and problems. And so obviously he had a run in with a shark when he was a baby and he survived and so he's a survivor and that's fine. Okay, so now we're gonna dry our whale completely. Okay guys? Okay, very fun. Now I need to move my stuff around here because the next thing we're gonna do is this super neat um, effect of um, the surface of the ocean, just sort of like, I don't know, well, it's bleeding is what it is, um, but it's just sort of fading down and leaving this white. Now you could obviously play with this and you could paint the background and do all kinds of things, but I just think the contrast is really neat um, by doing it this way. Um, so this is where you need nice fresh water because I don't want any tint um, in my water. And I'm also going to angle, well, I guess first I need to angle the camera. So hang on, I'm gonna angle the paper. Okay, so now I'm holding my board at basically a 45 degree angle because I want the bleeding to bleed down with the water, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take, make sure my brush is nice and clean and I'm using just pure water. All right, pure water, and just painting the top of my painting here. You can paint over the whale, but with blue pigments, um, sometimes they do get picked up again. So I am just kind of gonna go around him and not take the chance that going over the whale is going to um, be a problem. And even though I wash my brush, I can tell, I don't know if you can tell, but I can tell that there's the faintest amount of blue here. So what I'm gonna do is I don't want a line of blue. So I'm actually gonna take the time to pull this water down through the whole painting so that there's not going to be like a line of this super, super, super faint water. Um, so I'm just gonna pull it down so that I I'm sure that it's just sort of blending away. So even though I'm not going to do anything with all that water, I'm still going to put it on the on the paper. So that I don't have any weird edges, okay? You know that are strangely pigmented in just the tiniest way. All right. We want to have, make sure that the top of the top of the painting, where we're going to put this this um, technique, that has to be really wet. So make sure you go back over it and make sure it's just dripping wet with water. All right. Now you choose your ocean color, whatever color that's going to be, um, and you can, you know, have a little mix of whatever colors and get a lot of paint on your brush, really a lot and just touch it here at the top. And then keep that board at a big angle, okay? And then you can encourage it to continue to bleed a little bit by dropping more water. And you can have some control over that. Like if you think it's too much, you'd lower the board and it'll stop, OK? 
okay? So it's, a, it's like a game, you know, because if you like that side and you don't like this side, then you have to shift your hand and, you know, it's like, it's like playing that marble game where you're trying to get all the marbles into all the holes um, without letting the ones you've already been successful at move, okay? So it's kind of a game. Okay, there we go. Very fun. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so once again, this looks coolest if you have patience and leave it alone and let it dry. Don't mess with it. I have a little drip of blue getting ready to go down there, so I'm gonna stop that. Okay, so I'm gonna just lay this flat and we're gonna paint now the jellyfish and try to let that waterfall dry as much as possible naturally before we move on. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the jellyfish and I'm going to do those in exactly the same way that we did them on our first painting, okay? All right, so I need to have that little wet zone underneath of them right there and right there. And now I will grab whatever color my jellyfish is going to be Gonna make sure my brush is not too terribly wet and paint from the dry area and let it touch the wet area. And it's gonna react quite a bit with whatever color is going on underneath of it, okay? All right, let's do that again for this one. Now, if you don't want your whale to be this crazy jellyfish whale, then, you know, leave it a rainbow or leave it space or whatever. All right, so now I do need everything to be dry before I move on. So I'm gonna use the hair dryer again. Cynthia asks, about how long is patience needed? Um, well, a lot of that depends on your ambient humidity. Um, so you need to have as much patience until the paper is bone dry, which is kind of a crummy answer, but there you go. Okay, everybody, this is basically dry, and I just wanted to show you um, close up the phenomena called granulation. Do you see how um, sort of sandy the color is? That's a phenomena called granulation, um, and that happens with some colors in watercolor, and it's, um, it also happens with some quality of watercolor paints. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, discussion, I'm sure, um, over which brands are the best brands of watercolor paint. And I just don't do it enough and I don't care enough to invest the kind of money in watercolor paints that cost quite literally for a teeny tiny itty bitty um, piece of, um, or you know, a, a jar of watercolor paint, 30 or $40 for, for like a, a smidgen of an ounce. Um, I just don't care enough. But the higher the quality paint, the less granulation you have. Nevertheless, it is a actually interesting thing that can happen um, with uh, a lot of the deeper, darker colors. Um, and sometimes you can use it to your advantage. And I personally feel like for this situation, that looks really, really neat. Okay, so now we're ready to do um, the sunset. And if we wanted to add the boat, we can add the boat. Okay, so the sunset is, again, a wet-on-wet wet technique, um, and I'm not really doing anything 
um, unusual or different here than what I've done for you guys in the last couple of sessions. And if you don't know, if you're just joining me, uh, if you don't love the idea of scrolling through my Facebook feed for the last eight weeks looking for all these watercolor classes, if you go to my website, which is White Arbor Quilting, or you can look for Beth Ann Nemish, um, either, in either case, dot com, um, there's a blog called Art Therapy Thursday, and I have compiled all of the um, watercolor classes on the blog in one place so that you don't have to go through the you know annoyance of scrolling through the feed and I do try to teach all of these as if I'm teaching people who don't paint um, and I am specifically choosing paintings that I feel like are success oriented because that's kind of the goal here is to just have a happy experience so once again I've just painted very carefully right up to the line with just water all right, and let's see. I'm trying to get the yellows in view for you. Here we go. Um, I'm gonna choose the color that I feel like I want the sun to be. And it's gonna be just a couple of blobs of bright yellow right over the whale's nose. So I'm just plopping that in. And now you just kind of like rotate through your sunset colors and adding, you know, little halo. This is a good chance for you just to kind of play with, you know, play with your paint box and see what you can come up with. And if you wanted it to be a lot more structured, um, you could go back a couple of, of my watercolor sessions ago where I did sunset silhouettes um, and you could paint like real clouds and, and you know, make it to be a much more structured um, kind of sunset, um, which would also be you know, pretty neat looking. So e either one works. And I'm going to add some pinks. And this would have also been nice if I had masked off the painting. Um, I'm just painting up to the edge of the paper. Um, but, you know, you could have just masked off this whole painting as well. All right. So I'm pretty satisfied with, um, with that. I think I'll add, I'm adding a little bit of... Um, indigo here at the outer edges of the sunset. Now ideally, once again, it's better to have patience and let these colors just kind of have their own life and let them grow together by themselves. But we don't have patience in class today, so I'm going to go ahead and dry this. Um, Deanna asks, could granulation be caused by hard water? Um, very possible. I don't know if the answer is true or false, Deanna. I do know that I have hard water. I have a water softener in my house because it is so bad. So that is a possibility, but I would have to research your answer to be able to be truthful. Okay. Okie dokie, almost there. And Anne says that she's taken watercolor 101 type classes and they don't have awesome learn as you go projects to get beginners excited. Well, thank you. That's a wonderful compliment. Thank you, Anne. Um, yeah, I just, um, you know, I, I am not a watercolorist in the sense of you won't catch me making lifelike flowers and, and doing paintings like that. I'm just, I'm just not that good at it, to be perfectly honest. But I do know really good um, beginner tricks and fun techniques that can make this a fun event for, for beginners. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. All right, so now we get to put in a ship and I am just making up a little sailboat here. Um, you could put in a three-masted clipper ship, you could put in a cruise ship, you could do whatever you want. Um, I'm just sort of making up a little sailboat shape. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not completely sure that sailboats actually look like this. Um, and I'm not curious enough to go look. So I'm just kind of making up a sailboat shape um, right underneath of the whale because I just, I think that's a fun 
fun idea. And the smaller your ship, the more like crazily dramatic this painting looks. Um, all right, so I'm using just the my finest brush and I'm basically putting in kind of a triangle shape. I have to move my painting around here. I'm having trouble with the angle. I have to peer around the camera to um, have the camera at this angle for you guys. So it's a little unnatural for me to do that. Okie dokie, so I've got kind of a mm, banana shape, I think that's basically is. And now the mast. Okay, and I'm just doing kind of a black and indigo together. And now I'm kind of just doing like the little puffing sail. I'm sure that there are some sailors that are just like screeching going, that is not the way sailboats look. So I don't care. Um, <laughs> if I was really curious, I would go look and I'm not. So there we go. There's my little sailboat. Um, so now we have to go back and add some details inside the whale, like his eye and just a little bit more going on um, with him. But I feel like the sunset and the top of the water is done. So to do the whale's eye, I'm going to use um, black. I'm gonna make sure my brush is really dry um, to put his um, eye in because I don't want it to accidentally run. So I can barely see it um, on my paper, but I can still see where it goes. So it goes right here. Just like that. And it's actually not very big. Okay. And well, let's see. I think the next stuff is going to be stars and jellyfish tentacles, and then we are done. Okay, so those are gonna be with white. Just sort of rinsing off my brush again, and I'm picking up some white now. I'm gonna add some of the wrinkles underneath of his chin that humpback whales have. Um, I think that's kind of a fun uh, texture, so I'm just gonna add those in like that. Now I'm gonna go and do um, some jellyfish tentacles. I'm gonna do kind of a combination of the last two jellyfish that we did and make that little zigzag um, oral arm underneath and a few lines, but I'm actually gonna not put in that scalloping. I'm just gonna leave it this time. And I'll put in a few little tentacles. So this is like a third maybe kind of feeling jellyfish, third kind of feel style. And this one's got his little trailing, um, you know, oral arm and his tentacles are kind of trailing down because he's moving through the water. A little bit going on there. And I think a few sparkles just because. And I think that the whale would look nice with a catch light in his eye. So I'm gonna put one dot right there. And now I'm gonna add some stars and kind of make this look more like a galaxy. And again, this is just me basically having fun with this painting. Um, if you don't like that look and you liked it better being more solidly ocean without the stars, you know, have that, whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. You could add those little tiny jellyfish to imply, you know, far away stuff. Um, but I'm just kind of, you know, making a mystical kind of feeling guy here. And some of these can have like little X's to imply that they're like a twinkly star. Just use a few hairs on your brush, you know, to just barely touch the paper. And maybe, maybe a sh comet. So maybe a little comet that's shooting through the galaxy here. There we go. I'm gonna call that painting completely finished. So let's bring that really close to you guys so you can see. And you can see when I stamped that, 
how it has this beautiful glow to it, which is really mysterious. And you can see the little catch light in his eye. All right, so there we are. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and say hello to you guys. There we are, hey. So I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Um, and here we have our little whales and they all look different every time. So there we go, two together, hello whales. Um, I will go ahead and take a picture of the, the whale pattern and put it in the comments. So depending on how many comments there are, that might mean that you'll have to kind of scroll through. Um, hopefully that's not an issue. Um, if it is an issue and it doesn't like read very well, someone shoot me a message and I'll put the, um, put the whale pattern like in a separate post so that it's easier to find. But so if, if anybody has trouble finding it, just let me know. Okay. Um, but you can um, print any picture and do that. So if you need a silhouette of something else, like maybe you want to make the same painting, um, but do a silhouette of something completely different. Maybe you want a mermaid or something and you don't want to draw a mermaid. Um, you just print a picture, scribble on the back of it, and then you can trace it. Um, so it's pretty easy to do. All right, guys, I hope that you guys have a fantastic weekend and I'm going to continue to press on with my studio redecoration. Um, I'm a little bit at a standstill because one of my new doors, their glass um, doors, arrived shattered. So I have to reorder it and wait. Um, but my handyman is coming to finish the drywall today, which is great. Um, and I'm ready to load some fabric and test out the long arm and make sure that it just does everything perfectly. And we're going to call the, the move for the studio a complete success. Um, so have a great day and goodbye everyone and see you maybe Monday. Um, uh, for those of you who are quilters, um, I'll be doing another like detail of my rulers that I manufacture, um, you know, just to kind of highlight uh, the capabilities of my rulers. And that's on Monday at one o'clock um, Eastern time. And then next Thursday, I'll have a new success oriented painting for you guys um, so that we can continue with this whole, um, you know, quarantine uh, art therapy stuff. So, all right. Bye bye, everyone. See ya.